No, you just hold on. Are you ready for the countdown, kids? Yeah. And the audience, you can help us too. Really loud. Are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Cut. We are here to celebrate the reconstruction of this greenhouse, which was built between 1904 and 1905. And it is imagined, not fully proven, that this is the, the original greenhouses were the work of these greenhouse conservatory, conservatory designers called Lord and Burnham. And Lord and Burnham designed lots of famous greenhouses, um, like the United States Botanic Garden in Washington, D.C. And has anybody been up to um, the New York Botanical Garden of the Bronx. You know this beautiful greenhouse there, the Enid Hub Conservatory? That was designed by Lord Burnham. They have all the tropical plants and the things. Anyway, in the old days when they built greenhouses, they built them of cast iron sometimes. In this case, it was built of cypress wood because they didn't really have aluminum in those days. And the metal was expensive. And you, as you can imagine, wood gets old. Rots, the glass panels were falling out, the metal spores were rusting. So the whole thing was really falling down. It was getting harder and harder to grow plants. And we built these new greenhouses um, that will prolong the growing season. It's all redesigned with more benches. The benches are the things that plants sit on to increase, to allow us to grow more plants and more space for the employees. A new um, sort of exterior envelope and a more efficient heating system that will allow us to heat it without using so much energy. It's really state of the arts. So we've gone from old and falling apart to state of the art, which is pretty great. You know, I visited the old greenhouse, and I was saying to myself, God, can't we do better than this? But even in spite of that, the conditions were not always as I'm sure the workers would like to have had them. But they do miracles. You give them three plants, and you turn around, you're going to have ten plants. They know exactly what to do to make sure that the flowers grow, and they also, if, when we have like things like, like, like State of the Borough Address, they loan us plants to put up on the stage, which we really do appreciate. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that has that you do that to. But it's a wonderful, it's, this is a modern state of the art uh, greenhouse, and it's going to be, they're even going to be more efficient because they'll have the latest in equipment. Great day for greenhouses, for, but most important is a great day for beauty in the city, and I'll tell you why. Um, as, you, as we go through our days, and sometimes we have worries and cares, and we got to get to school, we have more work to do, we have our jobs, and things aren't working out well. If you stop and you sit down and you look at flowers and you smell the flowers, it's a nice perfume that comes out. Some bees are buzzing around and they're getting pollen. And uh, birds might come down and attract it to the berries or the fruits and, and the shrubs. And your whole day suddenly feels better. Living through a very wonderful time here in New York, and I hope um, some of our neighbors here will agree. And we have um, some wonderful neighbors here, like from the Woodhaven Block Association, the Forest Hill Civic Association, the Richmond Hill Block Association, who really care about their neighborhoods and their parks. And I hope that they will agree with me that um, there's been a big sea change in the city over the last 20 or 30 years, that we have um, been very fortunate to uh, have the opportunity to make the city more beautiful through planting flowers all across the city. Here in Queens, here in Forest Park, but all across the city, and in the hundreds of things we call green streets, which are the little triangles. How many of you see these in your neighborhoods, little triangles, traffic islands that used to be paved, and then over the years we worked with DOT to dig them up and plant them with flowers and shrubs, and in many cases we have neighborhood organizations that will take care of them. But at the end of the day, they are the city's responsibility. And now when you walk down a block, you come to corner across the street and pause and take a rest or you're driving, you'll see some of these green streets. And the green streets don't get beautiful by accident. They have to be planted, they have to be watered, they have to be weeded, and, and flowers brought in. You know, you should all know before I speak about Queens, the, the city is much, much greener because of Adrian Benepe. So he deserves much of the credit. He said earlier he loves gardeners, he loves flowers and plants, and you see them all across the city and it's all because of him. So thank you, Commissioner, for allowing us to do what we love. If you think about it, most greenhouses grow flowers and people buy them and they put them out in their gardens. 
in this facility, we not only grow them, we grow over 250,000 plants a year. We also design the garden beds, we plant and maintain them. So the gardeners that you see here growing in the winter months are also in the winter out taking cuttings in the field, tending to those gardens, thinking about designs. The layouts that you see here today are all part of all of their collaborative creativities. All of our gardens across the borough, although they're maintained for the large part by, by the staff here, we're always looking for volunteers to help us. So that if you're out there and you have a green thumb, or you don't have such a green thumb, but you'd like to learn to have a green thumb, we have spots for you to help us help maintain parks and do gardening, um, or just do anything you want to do in a park. We, we, we thrive by our volunteers, and I want to thank you all for coming out today, particularly all of the residents who are from Board 5, Board 9 area that truly support this park on a regular basis. We couldn't do it without you. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.